How's it, how's it guys? When you want to improve your photography, often you turn to you know, the works of great photographers. And we try and analyze their approaches, you know, what lenses they use, what sort of techniques, what's their composition ideas, and that's fine to a point. But beyond that, I've always found that the most fascinating insights that I get to a photographer is reading a biography or you know, listening to them talk or, in very rare cases, being able to talk to them about what motivates them in their photography. Way back when this channel got started, I was fortunate enough to see a name pop up on the, the recent subscribers list that we get in the, in the dashboard on YouTube. And there was a name and I went, ah, I know that name. And I looked him up and sure enough, it was pro photographer Tyler Shields, who's story is absolutely fascinating and I got a chance to sit down with him and, and pick his brain about what motivates him as, as a, a, a photographer who covers such a wide range of ideas. And I invite you to sit, get a coffee and just listen to the truth bombs and the knowledge nuggets that Tyler shared with me. All right, how's it, how's it guys? Today we've got the very awesome Tyler Shields who's joining us all the way from LA now. You may not know the name, uh, Tyler Shields, um, but his work is is celebrated through so many channels. Uh, Sotheby's have called him the, um, the the Andy Warhol of our times, which is uh, uh, high <laughs> praise indeed. Um, so, Tyler, yeah, welcome to the channel. Uh, it's it's fantastic yeah. to to finally meet you. As you said off camera, I think you were one of the first people who sort of you know. So subscribe yeah. to, to, to TP. He says, it's fantastic to meet you in the flesh. And um, so for, for people who are not kind of familiar with you, yeah. um, how would you describe your photography? Oh, man, that's the age old question, right? Yeah. So and by the way, it was amazing to see the How's It, How's It in person. That was what hooked me <laughs> to the channel. Yeah, oh, so, fantastic. Um, so for me, you know, I started out probably like most people, um, I was just taking pictures of friends and doing things, you know, this has been in the early 2000s. And I just could only take pictures the way that I could take pictures. So I don't, I don't really know, like if you said to me, I need you to take this picture, I, I can't do it. Like I can only do it the way that I see it. Um, so even if I just tried to take a portrait, I can only do it my way. If I try to take a picture of a car blowing up, I can only do it my way. So um my my friends kind of say well you know you 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 can just take tyler pictures so i guess that's probably the easiest way to describe them <laughs> you say you take tyler pictures now that's what my their words not mine <laughs> so just, there's there is a if you know if somebody would google you there there are two words that seem to pop up quite a lot is is a provocateur and uh -huh. uh, and, and controversial uh -huh. and do, do you think those are fair sort of labels? Well, I think, you know, you, when I was, when I was started coming up, you know, I was doing these kinds of photographs that at the time, not a lot of people were, were doing, not a lot of people were getting publicized for doing. Um, and so, you know, they needed a label for me, you know, and, and I don't think you're going to see a lot of articles that say really nice guy takes crazy picture, right? <laughs> So they yeah. want to they, they want to give you something, and the provocateur label became kind of the thing. Um, I think AOL had done this article on me when I was like first starting out, and they called me a provocateur. And from then on, that's kind of stuck with me. So it's, it's just some, it's some, as you said, like a fashionable kind of label. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually named one of my books provocateur just because I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just so you know so looking at your work there, there seems to be like a huge range of of influences that we, we'll get to sort of in a minute but you know how did you how did you get started because i believe your background was uh as like a, prof a professional um inline skater and what, have yeah, you so what was that transition because that seems a bit of a change it was wild. I started racing motorcycles uh, when I was five. Then I did uh, rollerblading, turned pro professional with that at 12, dropped out of middle school at 14 um, to travel the whole world doing that. And from that made skate videos. And, you know, this is like early days of like Media 100 and Final Cut Pro 1. 
you know, like the early days yeah. where it was like, you'd render a video, it'd take 20 hours to render the video. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the computer would die, which was the whole thing. Of course. But, uh, you know, as I kind of started that, I had uh, a bunch of friends that were skate photographers. And one of my like best friends from childhood was this incredible like action sports photographer. But that was all I knew of photography. You know, we didn't grow up with art in my house. Uh, you know, there was no, oh, you can make art. Like you can sell prints of photographs and people will buy them. That was just not something I ever knew existed. So yeah. I, the, the joke that I always have is when I started really going down the road of photography, I was rejected by so many magazines and by so many people. No one wanted to hire me that I had this idea of like, well, what if I just sell the prints? And it was like, obviously, you know, I, I knew that other people somewhere must have done that, but I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this is, this is brilliant. Like I'll just sell, <laughs> I'll just take the photographs and sell them as prints. My first print I ever sold was $75. It was awesome. And how did that feel? Oh my God. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because when you don't know like that any of that exists mm. and, and it's sad because now we all have the internet, right? Like we, so we, we have much more knowledge now, but I didn't know who I, at that point I knew who Ansel Adams was and I knew who Annie Leibovitz was. And I'd heard of a couple other people, sure. but it, we didn't have like people like yourself. And that's why I was so excited to come on here is like, I think, you know, you are now what college used to be right uh and but better because you actually give real information <laughs> um, and so i just love this idea of how much information there is now but there was something beautiful about it when i was starting out you just didn't know like you didn't know that there was sotheby's you didn't know that there was galleries all around the world um everything was just so tiny it, it, it's interesting you mentioned this you uh this idea that now there's so much as you said available to us and it's easy to kind of point fingers and for other people also to point fingers back at you and say, oh, but you're just copying so-and-so's work or it's just a regurgitation of something else. Yeah. Whereas yeah, back in the day, we also, we did, we, we learned and we grew in little bubbles independently. Yes. And it's, a, it's amazing to sort of see how there are sort of themes that crop up, approaches that crop up through mm -hmm. photographs that a lot of people have arrived at independently and oh i mean that's that's the craziest thing to me is when i see photographers attack other photographers i just never understand it, it it's very sad to me um you know there's 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 as as with anyone who has taken a lot of photographs i remember i had this this guy uh, i'd taken this one photograph and this guy had just started getting all these people to attack me on instagram and it was because I had posted this photo. Well, the photo was actually from five years before. So it predated the photo that he was talking about. So then people then turned on him and said, well, no, you actually like this photo because he posted it five years ago. So do you copied him and then the thing and whatever. And yeah. I said, no, 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 no. Nobody's copying anybody. Nobody owns an idea. You can create things. Obviously, you don't want to duplicate something, but it's like, I've taken photographs of mouths. I'm not the first person ever to take a photograph of a mouth. I'm just the first person to do it the way I did it. Yeah, and and that's interesting because you you mentioned mouths, and I think that's that's probably uh, it's probably like a, a, a I say it's an easy starting point, but it's probably a nice little jumping off because obviously whenever you talk about mouths in 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 certainly fashion photography, whatever better word, urban pen pops up, and I'm sure probably have pointed fingers at you say, well, it's just a copy of an urban pen image sure. and what have you and do you feel that given that you know a lot of people may point the finger and say look the reason that they sort of get antsy about it is maybe because you do sell work as you said you know you 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 have work in some of these things and so it's easier for people to get pissy for want of a better word because you are what we call in the uk a tall poppy somebody's achieved success and they go well you're just copying stuff <laughs> right 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 yeah i mean look at the end of the day if i had only ever taken two photographs and they were exactly like someone else's photographs you mm -hmm. could say sure but you know i've got probably now 
uh, probably 1,100 photographs I've taken that have been in galleries. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. You know, that is that lot, is a lot. Yes, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of photographs that I've, you know, that that's photo. That's not just photos I've taken. Mm. That's photos that have been taken and been printed and been sold, yeah. and you know that's a big long body of work. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, like, uh, if you if you if for any photographer who's watching this, if you ever want to know the hardest part of doing this, it's not taking the pictures. It's not, uh, oh, I want to go out, put myself out there. It is, can you be attacked? And can you let that attack not change you? Can you keep going? And I see so many people, like I remember I have this friend who he got started to get some success and he got that first negative comment and it, it shook him to his core. It, it, it is hard when you get those. Right, yeah. right. And I, and I think that a compliment and an insult are the same thing. An insult just takes longer to write. <laughs> it is, it is, there is, there, uh, you know, there are, it's, it's funny how we hold on also to, to, um, to, well, I say insults, you know, to negative criticism. It's, mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of photographers would do well to take on board what you've just said there about, you know, learning to, so put on the flame, the flame proof suit you know, to, to not kind of worry about it too much and, and to kind of, you know, plow their own fields, not worry about what, what people are thinking about your work and, and yeah. doing, doing their own thing. You know, it, it's, and, and I have to sort of say, one of the things that strikes me in, and I'm looking on the screen here, there is a, is it a Rolls Royce that you've blown up? uh-huh yeah it's like that just seems to me it's like that seems very much out of like i'm just gonna i have an idea and i'm just gonna roll with it uh and, and so what what is the thought process behind your approach to photography do you just kind of have these random ideas that pop into your head do you do you, do you collect yeah. them in a, in a way yeah so you know that's that's the funny thing too is like i, I think people uh people have different processes, right? I know like, you know, the big thing now is people will say like, oh, here's my Pinterest board and here's this and here's that. Mm -hmm. I never did any of that stuff. I would just say like, I remember I was driving down the street. I was in Beverly Hills. I saw a Rolls Royce on the side of the road. The engine was smoking. And I was like, oh, what if we blew up a Rolls Royce? You know, and you see all these things in life and you're like, oh, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. This place would be interesting. And so uh, there's, I can see the photograph done, like the moment it pops into my head. Mm -hmm. Obviously with the Rolls Royce blowing up, it takes some time to do. You have to find the car to do the thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's all, a lot. you can't just do those the next day. But there will be all the time where people come to my house, they sit down on the couch. I talk to them for 10 minutes and I see the photograph that I never saw it before they walked in the door. That's, that's, that's very interesting. Is that, do you, is this like a conscious decision or is something just pops into your head and you just kind of go, I'm just going to roll with that? Yeah. So, um, I think it's a bit of both. Like sometimes I'll have these big ideas, like, you know, when I did the Marie Antoinette stuff, you know, that was like, okay, how do we conceptualize this in the sense of we're going to build the set? You know, we looked at shooting at Versailles and the moment we were like, can we spray champagne everywhere? They're like, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, great. We'll build our own Versailles and then we can do whatever we want in it. But then, you know, okay, how do you build it? How do you do this? How do you build the dresses, the wigs, the thing, you know, all that stuff takes a long time. So when I was doing that series, uh, it was taking all this time to build everything. I ended, I ended up shooting like another series while I was waiting on that stuff to be done. Um, cause I just had another idea. And so yeah. I think part of the fun for me is no limitations. What can you imagine that is reasonable to do, right? You can't just do everything like, you know, you're not yeah. just going to buy 20 cars and blow them up, but whatever you can imagine, just do it. That is, yeah, I think that it it's, I think that's a wonderful a approach is just to have a sort of a freedom because often your reason the word gatekeeper has turned up a lot 
you know, that there are specific things that you're supposed to photograph, especially for people who are doing this, let's say, more towards being a hobbyist thing. And and we but we're all human. We all want some sort of recognition of, of the work that we create because certainly I, I feel that all of my images have a part of me inside them. So if somebody says, I like that photograph, then I'm kind of going, what well, they they sort of like me. And it's a nice little validation. And sure. you know, so what happens if you are sort of, you know, just trying stuff out? going off and, and just you know you, and, and it doesn't land you know then then what do you feel that sometimes things go a little bit awry so i'll give you an example of that uh yesterday i sold a print of a photograph that i had taken 10 years ago mm -hmm. and this happens you know periodically for 10 years no one bought it and no one cared about it now yesterday someone bought it now, does that mean that it wasn't good for 10 years? Mm. Or does that just mean that for whatever reason, it just got lost and it hit yesterday, right? So my thing is, if you worry about the system of likes, if you feed yourself on what we're predicated to think is, bravo, I like this, you will never progress and you will never try anything new. So if you only care about likes, you'll only keep making things to get likes. For me, I try to say like, okay, I'm doing this series. I remember I was doing this series called The Dirty Side of Glamour. And it was all this crazy stuff, with all these famous actors and doing just wild, wild stuff. The next series I did was literally, uh, you know, people in sand dunes shot on like the X-Pan Hasselblad and, and uh, you know, just crazy different like four by five Hasselblad it was a very different look and feel than mm. anything I'd ever done before and I remember showing one of my galleries and they were like we can't sell this this is like not a Tyler Shields photograph and I yeah. said it is now <laughs> it is now it's because I've said it is. <laughs> like, do, do, do you um you know you going to talking about your sort of celebrity photography um, you know, and, and that dirty side of glamour, um, those images, how do you, I mean, how did you sort of get in touch with these people? Is it that you just happen to meet them, you know, through social events or what, what was the story there? Yeah. So, you know, I, I was always very fortunate in the sense of if anybody wanted to meet me, the way that they would do it is through someone who already knew me. Mm -hmm. so like when I met you know Lindsay Lohan when I photographed her I was sitting at the Chateau Marmont and a friend of mine came over and said oh Lindsay wants to meet you so that it's like okay great I meet Lindsay then Lindsay is like oh this person wants to meet you then this person then I meet this person then da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. and so it would just always be this thing of oh well I'm doing this movie with this person you should shoot them yeah uh, you know, so it was, it was never, it was never like, oh, the publicist and the thing and the magazine and whatever. It would just be like, oh yeah, like I would be somewhere, I would meet somebody and they'd be like, I'd love to shoot with you. Like I'm, when I first met Aaron Paul, he had done one commercial and I mean, I was, I, I had just started. We literally had just both started. We met walking down Sunset Boulevard and we, I ran into a friend I knew and he's like, this is my friend, Aaron. He's going to be a huge actor. You should shoot him. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I was like, great. And so I shot him. And, you know, we've been friends ever since. Oh, it, it is. Because, you know, when you look at these images, especially, you know, the images of, of celebrities, and, and I I feel that, you know, a lot of people in, in the public will go, oh, well, it's it's the, there's a stylist and there's an art director. There's all these sorts of things. And, and it's all kind of, it's very just so, uh -huh. you know. And yeah. then you look at some of the images that, that you're creating with these people. And they feel the complete opposite of that, that they're very in the moment, they're very spontaneous, that they have this kind of just, this seems crazy. It's like, how do you, how do you broach the subject of some of these things with these people? I remember I met with uh, a big, big magazine. It's not as big anymore, but it was big back yeah. in the day. And, and they said, all right, well, what do you want to do? I said, look, I just want to take pictures of people uh, in the craziest way possible. 
And I want those people to be interesting people. They don't have to be, you know, a rock star or a movie star, just interesting, crazy people. And I remember the, the editor of the magazine looked at me and said, that will never happen. You will never get a celebrity away from their publicist or their stylist or whatever. Mm. Cut to I've got 40, you know, famous actors in my house at two o'clock in the morning and everyone's just like running around. I've got a prop room and it's this and that. And I'm like, oh, come over here and we'll shoot you like this. And, da, da, da. Yeah. and, and I was like, well, it can happen and because anything can happen if you want it to. If you work hard enough for it, it will happen. Yes, I, I think that that I, I would love to be the fly on the wall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, it, it was it was wild. I remember like how how I met Demi Lovato. I do. I don't know if you know who she is. She's yes. a massive uh, singer, and uh, I met her because she walked into my house, and as you do, <laughs> she was like, "Oh, is I for, I think she was like, "Is my is Lily here?" And my friend Lily was there, and I go, "Yeah," and she's like, "Hi, I'm Demi," and blah 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 blah, and we started talking. Yeah, and like oh is it cool if i hang out and i was like yeah great and she came to see the person that just happened to be at my house and then she was like oh you want to take some pictures and i said sure that's and, it's, it's that i mean that I, that is obviously i feel like i think for most people watching that that's never gonna happen but right. you know, it's it, it for, for for the people who are you know sort of let's say working with with you know models or they're photographing somebody sure. one of the big i think like it's a big headache for them is is connecting with somebody and 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 directing the session right mm -hmm. you know sort of getting some sort of collaborative process going on between people and i'd imagine working with with actors and actresses and, and and performers that they're sort of somewhat used to putting on a performance of some description but what would you do what advice would you give to somebody who is looking to have that spontaneous you know, ideas flowing between people, but is working with somebody who may feel a little bit. Wooden, well, whatever. since I don't really, I don't really, I don't do the celebrity portrait thing anymore. Mm. I've, re I've, I've retired from that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you the whole secret if you want. In the, yeah, in, absolutely. the viral way. <laughs> in the sense of just giving back, I'll give you my entire secret on the whole thing. Mm. So at the end of the day, uh, celebrities are very babied, right? They're very coddled. And it's like, okay, you're going to go here now. And then you're going to take this picture. And most photographers are given three to five minutes to, to shoot them. When I would shoot an, an actor, I would have five to 10 hours to shoot them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like they would just come over and hang out. So my normal thing is I'd sit and talk with somebody for an hour before I'd even take their picture. I don't think that you can just take someone's picture in 30 seconds and really know like the inside of them. Now it, it has happened. I've had a couple of times where I've had to do it very quick and that's fine, but they are just people like everyone else. And every actor shares one common thing. They all want to have an iconic picture taken of them. Everyone. I don't care what they say. Every actor wants that deep down. And I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. It's sure. just like, you know, you're an actor. Like, of course, you look back at these, you know, great Jack Nicholson photographs or Audrey Hepburn or the old Avedons or the old Pens. And why do we care about Avedon, Penn, even Maplethorpe, you know, any of those guys or, or even David Bailey? Because they had time with these people. They, they got these people to be themselves and they let go now you can argue that for me at a certain point people just started coming to me because they wanted to have that experience i remember i had this actress come one time this is kind of towards the end and i was i was really just like i wanted to get this very specific eight by ten portrait of her so we spent you know 20 minutes and i was just really focused on this thing we take the eight by ten portrait and she goes when are we going to do some crazy shit <laughs> and I was like, oh, great. I got the I got the eight by ten. Now we can do some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. And so they already know coming in. And this leads me to my next thing, which is when people tell you that you shouldn't take pictures unless you're being paid, I disagree with that completely. I will shoot all the time, constantly for myself, right? 
So when, when a lot of these actors are coming, no one's paying me to shoot them. Mm. I don't care. I'm not trying to make money from them. I just love taking pictures. And it would be the craziest thing because it'd be like, oh yeah, I shot my friend, all these crazy photos of him. And then he's like doing the Hunger Games and he needs photos for this thing. And then the magazine's like, yeah, we want to buy these photos and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Cool, great. I don't care. I took them because I wanted to take them. But those types of pictures are the things that bring other people to you, right? So we walk this really fine line of like, if you want to have a crazy picture of a celebrity, you've got to get a crazy picture of somebody that's amazing. And then a celebrity sees it and says, oh, I want to do that. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of like that sort of virtuous cycle. And you, yeah. so you've said like, you know, you kind of, you've, you've sort of moved away from sort of celebrity portraiture and sure. and, be. and so what is what's your current sort of yeah. thing that gets you up in the morning that gets you excited about photography so um everything that i do now is all for galleries and uh i'm working on a new book and all that um i have i don't have to try to get myself up i have to try to go to sleep <laughs> i I yeah. am obsessed, you know, I'm sur in this room right now. I have probably 40 cameras, uh, you know, and then there's more throughout the house. Every, yeah. every room in my house has uh, steak sauce and uh, cameras in it. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I genuinely love photography on a level that is like, it's always like a conscious thought in my brain like breathing so i'm every time i see anything i'm like oh that's interesting oh that's interesting look at the way the light's hitting there look at that look at that da, 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 da. um now obviously like i don't get to shoot as much as i used to because now it's we're doing all the printing and we're doing this and we're doing that and it's you know we're setting up all these shows and it's it's all it's all a lot of things that i'm kind of managing mm -hmm. I, but I like that because now when I do the shoots, it's just like, okay, we're setting out to do this thing. This is exactly what I have in mind. And there's a group of people that are there to help me literally facilitate exactly what's in my mind. Yeah. See, it's interesting you you mentioned that because because a, a, a piece of criticism is, I think, unfairly thrown at Annie Leibovitz, especially these days. She has a big mm. team and she has the retouches and she has people just, you know, the, people just does everything for her. She walks, flounces in and presses the shutter and then it's it's done. Mm -hmm. And and that seems to be a fairly harsh critique for people. So like, you know, so you've mentioned having a, a, a team and I'm looking at some of your work and the, some of the production on a number of these images seems quite intense. Like there's a photograph here of, uh, it's the, um, you've got the Pan Am flight 62 moon landing. Yep. Now I'm going, I'm assuming it's a set because it, <laughs> I don't uh -huh. find any Pan Am jumbos or something around, but there seems to be an awful lot of work that's gone into that. You know, and how much of that is tied with the vision that you had up here originally, and then obviously the process that you've gone through to get the image. You know, what do you have yeah. other people who contribute ideas to that? Yeah. So the the way that I do it is like, um, you know, I think like La Chapelle has like a massive team. Annie Leibovitz has a, a bigger team. Mm -hmm. No, for me, it's typically two or three people, right? Really? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's my, you know, big team, right? Yeah. Uh, now, one of the things that we'll do is like, for instance, the Pan Am photo. Mm -hmm. We had to find this set. Um, that set has now been used in like the Wolf of Wall Street and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But when we did it, I don't know, I think they maybe just completed it. Yeah. We found that set and then it was like, okay, cool. I'm going to find every single piece of vintage clothing. So me and one other person did that and we yeah. sourced it from all over wherever we could. So it's like, okay, here's all this. Then I found a woman who had original newspapers from the moon landing. So oh. we got those. Uh, and then it was a matter of, okay, well, you know, what film do I want to shoot this on? What camera do I want to shoot this on? What lighting do I want to shoot this on? So then we found, you know, the exact color red um, fabric yeah. and 
we went, we photographed the red fabric on three different film stocks. And it was like, okay, this is the film stock I like with the light that I like. This is how exactly how I want it to look. Yeah. And so then when I went to actually take the picture, it was nothing. We'd already done it. Yeah. It's, it's it, that level of, of planning. I think for a lot of people reading what reading this, yeah, they're going to read the internet. Reading this, yes. <laughs> yeah, just um, <laughs> yeah, just a, they've, they've downloaded the transcript and they've asked Chat G yeah. to summarize it. Um, you know, they, they will they will see that and go, "Wow, that is a huge amount of planning for a, a single image." Yeah, you know, and, but, it just but blow their minds. Here, here's what I'll say about that, and I've said this before, but. I started, I started this idea in my mind some years ago when I had taken a photograph and it, someone had bought it. And then six months later, I went back and I saw the print on their wall and I was like, oh shit, I would do that different. I would do that different. I would do that different. I would do that. Okay. Okay. And I learned a lot in that moment. And I remember saying to myself, what if somebody was going to buy the photograph for a million dollars? Would I change anything, right? And if the answer is yes, then what would I change and change it? And if the answer is no, then fine, great. That's the image. But the idea of like, you know, that image uh, has been in Sotheby's and, uh, you know, that or an image from that shoot. I don't know which there's two or three of them from that shoot, but whatever, whichever one you're talking about, one of those images has been in Sotheby's and has been collected by, you know, a massive collector. And so when I'm 80 years old and I walk into a collection or a museum or I see it in a book, mm. will I will I be like, oh man, I'm so I'm so bummed I did all that work, you know, getting those vintage the actual vintage clothes yeah. or will I say, oh, that's the image that I wanted to make and it still is good today. Yeah. It, it, it it's interesting you mentioned about you know sort of pointing at things and seeing something up on the wall and, and going oh yeah that needs i could, could change this sort of thing because that kind mm. of it, it, for me that sort of leads into this not a, a thing of imposter syndrome per se but this idea that you you're often like do you feel that sometimes you're your own worst critic that you are pointing holes in your in your images all the time so the way that I always describe this to my friends is uh, as the artist or photographer, whatever you want to call yourself, your, as the photographer, your job is to see what is wrong with the image. The viewer's job is to see what is right with the image. So you talk about Avedon, you look at like the Dovima with elephants image. He hated that image. Yeah. He was like, oh, the thing's the wrong way. You know, I've, you've talked about that, right? Yeah. I've seen it on one of your videos. Yeah, And I think that that's okay. Now, the thing that for me is I've come to a place where I am, I am okay to accept the flaws because the flaws are what make you grow. You will never take a perfect image. You will always be like, hmm, I could have done this or that better if you were always still growing. I think it's not good to beat yourself up. And I think it's not good to be like, well, this image didn't get as many likes as this image. So the one that got likes is better. And some of the photographs I've posted that have gotten the least likes have sold for the most amount of money. So, you know, there's that whole cat and mouse game. Yeah. But it's so important to challenge yourself and push yourself, but in a healthy way. I think that that's that sounds like a, a, a good advice there because you know it, it's yeah beating yourself up about images and what people think about them is it um, is just going to end up sort of just gnawing away in inside you really isn't it that when you well, the yeah. sad thing the sad thing for me about what I what I see with a lot of photographers is they will uh you know they'll be in in this learning process and you can start now and within a month you can have a following and then within a year you can have a pretty big following mm -hmm. and as you get bigger i don't care who you are anyone watching this if you've made it this far in the video thank you <laughs> but uh, or you're reading it <laughs> you you are going to get someone that hates you mm -hmm. and the bigger you get the more people are going to hate you 
And for me, this is my advice, obviously, you have to take the hate as a sign of growth. And it is a accomplishment. Just like people hate movie stars or they hate race car drivers or they hate sports, you know, any athletes or whatever, right? Uh, the most famous athletes are the most hated people in the world. You're, you're on the right track. The problem where you go wrong is when you get that hate, if you change and you listen to the hate. One of my dearest friends who was one of the people who helped me the most with photography when I was starting he was an incredible action sports photographer, one of my favorite of all time. And he had one of his heroes looked him dead in his face and said, your photos are shit. Mm. And it broke. He never recovered. That, I mean, that must, that must be hard. That, that never meet your heroes kind of thing. Yep. That has, and it's, yeah, I just, had, never have, you, have you ever had anything like that happen to you? You, the amount of hate and the amount of shit that people have said to me. I've had the biggest magazines in the world look at me and say, pick another career. It's not going to fucking happen. Like, yes, I, I've experienced all of it. I had photographers uh, just try to eviscerate me and hated me. Um, and, you know, I, I know this will make me sound absolutely crazy, but I loved it because I knew the more that they were like angry with me, I was doing something. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was just doing things. I didn't know when it was never premeditated. I was I never set out with this plan of like, you know, I'm going to be this guy that does this crazy thing or whatever. I just was like, Oh, we're going to take these pictures and people are going to react to them. However they react. That, that's but, interesting because, like, you know, you talk about like you get, all, you get a, 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 like almost like a thrill when people are like hating on your on your work um and and yeah. that's actually i think that that's it's, a, it's an interesting way of looking at it because certainly I think if, if people are not liking what you're doing mm -hmm. then it, it seems that at least you are you're making a statement that yeah. if, if there's somebody who doesn't like your work that means then there's somebody who must like your work you know well, yeah there's i mean look at the end of the day uh if they're not talking about it <laughs> yes what's that, what's that Wait, Oscar wild thing is no such what do you yeah it's it's late at night here i can't remember the thing right. if there, there's but nothing now, worse about. now something did happen there was a shift so you know i i would get a lot of like angry people and photographers were not nice to me in the beginning um mm. and uh i didn't care i was like great you know it's all good and then as I, I don't know what happened, but as I kind of, maybe I was doing it for long enough. Maybe I had done enough images. Mm. It really started to change. And, and people started to be very uh, nice to me. Um, now I say that there were people in the beginning, obviously there were some, a few people who were very nice to me. Uh, Michael Muller, who, I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, he's one of the biggest commercial photographers in the world. Uh, photographs great white sharks not in a cage does all the marvel posters just you know the absolute nicest guy and when i started he was one of the very few people that was very nice to me and still to this day it, he will just call me and be like oh have you ever met with Toshin? you you need to do a book with Tosh. You you need to meet with these people yes. and then literally i'll be on the phone with the owner of Toshin within an hour like he's one of those people that actually does things for other photographers. And so for me, I mean, I've tried to mentor so many people and tried to help, uh, you know, a lot of younger kind of up and coming photographers because it's so important that we do that. Um, it's just, you know, and, and I, I mean, the amount of people I've sent your videos to, and I've said, look, watch 10 of this guy's videos. Um, and, and, you're going to learn so much just watching this. And the thing that I, and, you know, not to, you know, but the thing that I really like about you is from, from everything. And obviously I don't think I've watched every single video, but I've watched probably 90% of them. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I really like is, you know, you just love photography and you love photographers and you can tell that it's a genuine passion that you have. And that's what we need 
to keep this going. We need people to make things like this. Yeah, you, Tyler, I think you, you, we, we are on the same level with it, or the same line. Yeah, it is. You're absolutely right. You know, one of the reasons why I started the channel is because, you know, I would meet people in my sort of day to day life as a photographer who who didn't know who anybody outside of like say you know Ansel Adams was you'd mention Penn and they were like nope that's right you know and and I was like and I felt that I just wanted to give all this stuff back <laughs> and say look to people like look here's here's this work and here's this and that and you get so excited about it that you just kind of want to share things it's like I've got a book that you know, there's a shelf full of monographs that that there yep. is so much wonderful work out there. It's well, not for everybody, you know. It'll be silly. That's what happened to me. Yeah, you yeah. That, 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 that's what happened to me when I started. I didn't know who anybody was, and you, you know, uh, I, I think there's this thing that people misconceive, which is, oh, well, you're you're a successful photographer, so you know the entire history of photography, right? You know every single yeah. photograph that's ever been taken. You know everything. It's not the case. I meet people now who they know who I am. They know who other people are on Instagram. Mm. You start going, like you said, to Irving Penn and they're like, mm. uh, or you say Richard Avedon or you say Mablethorpe and they're like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you've had the exact same experience. And mm. it's like, oh my God. It, it's the equivalent to me of, of being like, have you ever seen a Stanley Kubrick movie? And they're like, who's that? Yeah, I've only ever watched Netflix. And you're like, oh, buddy. Yeah, it, you it, got a whole. It's so, it so interesting because you do get this thing, and there is this snobbery sort of idea. It certainly in certain circles of photography that you should have this knowledge, and that it, and and that that you know, if you don't have it, you're somehow deficient. You're, you're kind of like like film snobs, you know, that they will know everything, yep. or, and and they think that people who just I do, yeah, I like Fast and Furious well you're ridiculous you know because that's the kind of thing but it i just want to show people you know the, the work that's yep. out there to hopefully inspire them and say look you know here is here's tyler shields you may not know his work you may it might be your kettle of fish it yep. might not be but at least it's there inside your memory bank now it can help inform maybe a picture yeah. that you like you know and that's I, i'm well, so pleased to hear you say that you know? And what I think is interesting about that, too, is, you know, unlike uh, the, the way I kind of think of the photography world of YouTube right now is it's like the old encyclopedias, mm. right? People can go back and watch a video from 10 years ago, and they'll be able to go back and watch this video 20 years from now. So 20 years from now, there'll be somebody watching this exact moment right now who has no idea who I am because mm. they only know the people in the, their inner circle yeah. at that moment, right? That's exciting to me. The other flip side of it is as we're doing this video, we have mentioned people and hungry photographers will go and look those people up and that excites me. Yeah, yeah, because I, I look at your work and we haven't really talked about influences and stuff, but you know, one of the things certainly I've got you know some experience in, in like a whole bunch of photographers but when we've mentioned Penn we've mentioned Avedon but I see there's a whole bunch of, of like there's some 80s stuff going on there's like uh, Patrick de Michelier kind of stuff um, from oh, yeah. the late 70s early 80s some of those images got that feel um, you know there's, there's, there's just heaps of the, there's even some like Pink Floyd feeling with the bed in the ocean um, like hypnosis sort of things and it just it there's such a wide range of influences and and feelings and and approaches to your work that it it has to beg the question you say that you don't really have much of an influence or you know there's sort of a deep oh. knowledge, but but it seems like you are a uh was it a ravenous uh consumer of, of imagery is it would that be a fair comment so this is what's interesting. Like you talk about the bed in the ocean, yeah. right? When I took that picture, I had watched Breakfast at Tiffany's mm. and I thought, oh, you know, it would be amazing if we had Tiffany or not, sorry, uh, if we had Audrey Hepburn's character and not waking up at Tiffany's, but waking up in the ocean. 
Yeah. So we go out, we shoot that photograph. I post it and one of my friends writes me, oh, this is like the Pink Floyd cover. Yeah. I had not seen that Pink Floyd cover for 20 years. Yeah. I, it was not it was not a conscious thought my just my thought was breakfast at tiffany's instead of going to tiffany's waking up in the ocean yeah but then you look at pink floyd and it's like yeah obviously i saw that when i was a kid was not the thought when i was going no, to it's, it's interesting when you do that that you sort of like it's kind of you retrospectively go yes oh wait, wait, wait oh bunk, that that's where it comes from or something so like i that. could say i could very easily say to you like i was influenced by nothing when yeah. i took that picture because Breakfast at Tiffany's, obviously there was no ocean, right? She yeah, didn't wake yeah. up. But then also like, yeah, maybe the Pink Floyd thing was in my mind, but also maybe I just thought, you know what? This would be cool. Let's just do it. Because yeah. it, so it is funny because I'm, I'm looking through, you know, some of the images that you, you sent yeah. over. And now we're talking about Floyd and, and hypnosis and, and all sorts of things. There's a couple of images that have that sort of feel to them. And yeah. You know, and and so I suppose there's there's a there's a there's a slight problem maybe in so much as you can go well you, you must have been influenced by this, but then you kind of go well you're not consciously influenced by it you know because you look I think I think we are influenced by every single thing in our lives, you know and and whether it holds on to you and you're like oh this is exactly the thing like you know the the lynching photograph. Yeah. Um, you know, I I saw a, a, a Ku Klux Klan rally when I was a kid. We drove by it mm -hmm. and I looked out the window and I said to my dad, oh, there's ghosts. Yeah. You know, because they, they it's yeah. like what you would see in like a cartoon, right? Like they had the thing and it just looked like ghosts. From it. And he was like, oh, well, those aren't ghosts. Those are blah, 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 blah. And he explained yeah. the KKK to me. Yeah. And as I like saw the first picture when I was a kid of a lynching, I remember in that moment thinking, what if it was the other way around? Yeah. Then, you know, whatever it is, 20 something years later, I'm thinking about doing this series on historical fiction and that popped into my mind. Yeah. It's, it's I never, isn't it? Yeah. How, never how are these um these ideas they they sort of they 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 take root in your mind years yeah. and years and then they have to gestate and and sort of just grow and then their time is is right when yeah. it's when it's right for them you know there's well, yeah that it's like and that's that's what a great point because that image just was like. <laughs> It was just like in my head. And then I was like, this is it. And I said to one of my guys, I go, I got the image. It's this and this. And they go, well, maybe it should just be the guy in the tree. Like you don't need the other guy. And I go, no, no, it's the guy and the thing. And that's it. That's the image. And we're going to yeah. do it. And we, we actually built the swamp that that was in. Really? Uh, yeah, that was crazy. I, I'm going uh, to describe this because uh, they're, they're, YouTube in all of the wisdom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I will put this up on on screen for you, but I'm going to have to blur some of it. Um, for, for the, yeah, I got into, I, I always say got into trouble. It's funny how art stuff can can really um, upset the powers that be. <laughs> Sometimes I, he has he has to say, you know, but it is, I, you know, I I think it's a powerful picture, um, you know, especially now that you're describing it and 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 sort of you know and saying the backstory in there. Um, because you are you are from uh, Jacksonville in Florida. That's right. Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, so how much of of that do you think uh, you know? Not so much like Jacksonville itself, but sort of being born in a sort of like a swampy kind of hot environment. So, do you think any of that kind of influences your approach to photography? Absolutely. I think of you know, of course, like. I've I've been in swamps like that in Florida, you know, mm -hmm. like when I was a kid, you'd go out and you, you know, kayak or you do the, the power boats through the things, you know, you do all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, that image not in a swamp is a very different image. Uh, but when that kind of like pinged into my brain, it was like, oh, yeah, it's in the swamp. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then when we did that, 
everyone was like, oh my God, did you go back? Like, did you go to like Louisiana or did you go to Florida or whatever? And I said, yeah. oh no, we did, it. we did it like an hour from my house. Like it's in California. And they were like, what? Yeah, it, um, it, it just certainly does not feel like like California right. at, at all. I think that that's a, that's a crazy, uh, yeah, just building. Again, it's this this level of detail. And I, I look at, you know, a lot of the images that we, we hear, and they all seem very, uh, I'm going to use the word precise, you know, that even though some of them have some chaos to them also, they do feel like they're put together with a very specific aim in mind. It's like you're not just kind of being airy fairy about sort of things. Is right. do you ever take a photograph where it's just it's just something that's happening and you're just reacting to it? Or is that always a kind of this that has to be sort of a little bit more meticulous that, that you start off with an idea in mind? All the time I take pictures that never thought about until the exact moment. And that's yeah. one of the things to me about, you know, that the, I think people who are over influenced, it can become dangerous. So um, I don't know, like if there, there's this one photograph, I don't know if I sent it to you, but it's the, the splash of the girl with the splashing water on her face or whatever. Um, I don't know if that one's in there. Uh, um, yes, there is. Yes. So yes, yeah, so there's like oh, a bucket of water or something going into a that, that was literally in the moment we were going to do something else. And I said, before you get wet doing this other photo, <laughs> yeah, I want to, I want to try this. We'll only have one shot at it, Yeah, but I just, I'm just going to try it. And that was just like a, well, maybe I can get a two for one situation here. You know, yeah, like yeah. she's perfectly done up. And and so it's like, you know, that that photograph is like a platinum palladium print and it looks amazing printed and I love it. Uh, never had the idea for that. No, it's just Only the moment. Fair the moment. That, you know, I think that's that is something that I, I would certainly like to get back into in, in my own photography with people is is ha being a little bit more open to, you know, the, the, the I I sort of call it like the little sort of pixie dust inspiration that occasionally just is, is yeah. fitted on you. And and just being being mindful for it is, you know, is it fantastic? Every, every shoot that I've ever done, ever, period, hands down, I always take one that I never thought of. Yeah. Yeah. And because the more you do that, the more you allow yourself to do that, the better the result becomes. And then also there's something like freeing about it, like that water one, for instance, it's like, didn't matter if it came out or not, you know, it's like, we're going to try it one time. We're going to see what happens. And I remember the moment of taking it. I was like, I got it. It's, it'll be there. Cause it was on film. So yeah. I, I just was like, yeah, we got it. That was it. That is, uh, that is, I, I, I'm looking at it now and obviously we'll put these up on, on screen for people. It's, I think it's wonderful. I think that that's, it's a great, everything about it is really nice. The, the, also, the fact that water is a notoriously um, uh, flighty mistress. I think she would do oh, yeah. thing, you know, uh, it, that's amazing. And, and and then next to it is the creation of color thing, which is also those people throwing paint and splashes. Oh, yes. That, and again, that's another one. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, so... That one's interesting because again, one take shot mm. on film, uh, no rapid fire, no like da 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 da. Mm. That's a Hasselblad 503CW, just one go. Yeah. And and that was really the idea of like, uh, okay, I've got five people on the sides. And I need you all to be within a millisecond, within, you know, one, one twenty-fifth yeah. of a second on the exact moment. You've all got a hit on the exact moment. Yeah. And then when that all hits, I have to be on that exact moment. Yeah. The time, the timing on that is, um, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> it's just crazy. The, you know, as, as we sort of you know, cycle this back around and, you know, thinking about your the career and everything that you've had and, and, you know, the success uh, and, you know, all these kind of stuff. If you were to give one piece of advice 
to a photographer who looks at your work and goes, this is what I would, I would like to pursue, you know, to, to be a gallery represented photographer and selling for one of a better word, fine art photography. Yeah. How, what would you say to them? Hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that I would say, but if I, if I really had to boil it down to one thing is you have to take the photos that you want to take not the photos you think other people want you to take. And it's going to be a marathon. Photography has become a sprint, but it's not a sprint. It is a marathon. You look at Avedon, he shot like the day before he died. You look at Irving Penn, he shot the week he died. Helma Newton was on his way to a shoot when he died. Uh, photography becomes your whole life. And the moment that you can embrace that and have the people that say you're crazy and have the people that say it's impossible and, and, and accept all of those things that people are going to inherently say to you and be a psychopath and say, I know better and I'm going to do it and commit yourself to it. And, you know, for me, I think a lot of people would think like when I started, I was as poor as you can possibly be. I lived on a couch, then I lived on a bean bag. I worked every single step, you know, from like, okay, I can afford my first C stand now mm. to I, did, I couldn't afford the light to now I can get the light to now, oh my God, I have a desk, you know? So it, for me, it was great because I got to go through the whole process from literally having nothing to like, now let's blow up a Rolls Royce. And now like I can have any camera I want. Um, but there, there's a, a joy in the journey that you cannot forget. A joy in the journey. I, I love that. Tyler, thank you. Is uh, your your photography is is exceptionally interesting. And and I, I every time I look at it, I see something new there. To to hear you talk and, and get your insights into you know, the world of photography that you inhabit is has just been an absolute pleasure. I, I thank you so much for your time. It has been a, a pleasure. And uh, and you guys watching at home or reading at home, too, whatever it is you've been doing, listening, uh, thank you also for being here. If you've really enjoyed this, um, then I am the photographic guy. If you haven't enjoyed it, then this is um, this is um, the art of photography with, um, with <laughs> Ted Forbes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Ha <laughs> ha! That was amazing. <laughs>